Hello and welcome back to my channel. So this is my updated draft ahead of game week one. So in this draft, I also discussed about whether to go with Onana or Shaw or whether to triple up on Arsenal attackers or going with just two and going with a defender. So if you are new around here, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, we'll just get right into it. So starting off with goalkeepers like we always do. So this time around I've gone with Steel and Ariola. So the conversation that is the actual debate was between the Steel and Flecken. So both of them actually have a kind of similar data. They also have a very good run of fixtures. I think Brighton uh, with the loss of McAllister and probably Caicedo later there's a debate to be made that Brighton won't be that strong this season but I think uh, I believe in Debs every I think he will set up his team really good I think Mohamed Daoud is a good signing so I don't think there will be much of a difference in their gameplay it might take some time to gel but I think they will be all right so I've gone with Steel in this draft I won't talk with uh, talk about Ariola as I've talked about him in the previous three drafts and about Onana we'll talk about him later so in my defense, I've gone with three at the back with Gabriel, Eschupinian and Luke Shaw. So talking about another Brighton asset that is Eschupinian, I think he's really great attacking. If you take a look at his first three fixtures, they are just gold. And I think you need to own him in these three fixtures. Later on, their fixture turns a little bit bad. But I think you need to own him because he's just so attacking. He probably has the potential to get 10 to 15 points in at least one of these fixtures. So I've gone with him. Then I've gone with Gabriel, so probably I went gone with triple Arsenal attack. So I would uh, justify that in the, some time or I will talk about it. So Gabriel probably had the highest XG among defenders last season, and Arsenal ha are among the one of the best have one of the best fixture run. So I have gone with him. So talking about Shaw and Onana, so I do really believe that Onana is a great goalkeeper he is a great addition in also getting bonus points i think his pass completion rate is just superb his distribution is superb i think he will increase man united chances of keeping a clean sheet and controlling the game but that uh, adds to luke shaw's value too i think with luke shaw will get the license to go forward and the team will shift a little bit forward than they usually do and if man united sign a number nine i think the points that luke shaw and uh, Bruno Fernandes weren't getting on their crosses because there was no one to head those, tuck those away. I think they would get these if they signed Holland and I think Holland, I don't know how to pronounce it and I think we are going to sign Holland this season. So I think Luke Shaw and Bruno Fernandes will be bargains at their price. So that is the reason why I'm going with Luke Shaw at 5.5 or Ona now he's priced at 5 million. So moving on to the bench defenders, I've gone with Chilwell. So I have actually got on to him uh, pretty earlier because I think after the three game weeks when the fixture run turns good, I think everybody will want those Chelsea assets. So I've gone uh, for him right now to get ahead of the curve. Then it's Bardock uh, as my last 4.0 million um, defender in my team. So about Chilwell, I think he has the most... Uh, chances of scoring a goal among defenders obviously last season was a dull season for Chelsea but I think under Pochettino they, they are playing with high fullbacks and I think he will have a great season if he, uh, if he remains fit over the course of the season so moving on to the midfielders, I've gone with Pai in the middle. I've gone with Rashford, Saka, Odegaard, BMO and Foden. So talking about the Arsenal midfielders, Saka, Odegaard and Martinelli. If you take a look at their data, there's not much difference between the three. Except last season, actually Martinelli was just surpassed by Saka even though he was injured in the second part of the season a bit. He missed some games, that too with Saka being on pens. So I don't think really that there's much about between them. So here we take a look at data between Saka and Odegaard. If you take a look at their expected points for the next three game weeks, Saka's are 16.2, Odegaard's are 15.8. For next 5 game weeks, Saka's are 26.7 and Odegaard's are 26. 
so chances of assisting for saka are 29 and in the nottingham forest and game and for odegaard is 27 scoring for saka are 35 and odegaard are 29 so it shows the similar kind of data for martinelli 2 and martinelli is 0.5 million cheaper than these two but for right now i've gone with saka and odegaard and i had thoughts of triple upping on the arsenal midfielders but the thing is that if we triple up on arsenal midfielders i won't get the other midfielders from other teams who i want in my team plus i don't have that attacking option that is in forward option who is below 8 million near about 6.5 to 7 million nailed on attacking option so for that reason i opted to go with two arsenal midfielders and a one defender uh, so if that option becomes available i think i would go with triple arsenal midfielders cause their uh, starting and starting fixtures till game week 8 and game week 9 are really good and i fancy these three over gabriel jesus and also gabriel So I've gone with Marcus Rashford. He is 0.5 costlier than Bruno Fernandes, but as I said earlier, if Man United side Holland, I think uh, Bruno Fernandes and Shaw are better picks that Onana uh, than Rashford and Onana respectively. So if that happens, I definitely will go with Bruno Fernandes. Then I've gone with BMO. I think if you take a look at Brentford's fixture run, I think it's pretty much decent it's similar to brighton as i said earlier but uh, bmo is on pens and he is an nailed on starter and metomo might get uh, rotated later on in the season so i for a longer term pick i have gone with bmo then i have gone with phil foden as i believe that de bruyne is injured bernardo silva there's a chance that bernardo silva leaves and also mares has left then gundogan has already left so i think Grealish and Foden both start for Man City. I think as an FPL asset, Foden is a better pick than Grealish. And he, Man City are the best team in the world, and they have the best fixture run among the top five teams. And I think I want to double up on at least to double up on uh, Man City attack because everyone will have Holland in their team. So I opted to go for Foden. So. Talking about attackers, obviously Holland is my Holland is in my team. He will be my captain. And the next pick right now I have gone with is Nkuku. So as I said earlier, there's a chance that I could go for Gabriel Jesus if uh, Man United don't sign Holland, whatever his pronunciation is, from Atlanta. Uh, or I could just keep Nkuku in my team. Or if we sign Hulun, I think I will go with triple Man United assets in Shaw, Bruno Fernandes, and Hulun. And yeah, so that's my case. The other attackers, that is forwards, I'm looking at are also Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Then I have my eyes on Watkins and Gabriel, obviously. So I have with this draft, I have 0.5 million in my bank, and I've already told my plans. If the certain things go my way, that I will make some changes. So do let me know, guys, what do you think of this draft in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And until I'll see you in the next one. Good luck.